Good evening. I'd like to open the planning board, uh, the Deerfield Planning Board meeting, February 4th, 2019, at 6 14 p.m. at the Deerfield Town Hall. Our agenda tonight is to review minutes of previous meetings, review some mail, take some public comment. Then we have two public hearings. The first public hearing is a site plan review at, of 10 Greenfield Road, and I'll read that in just a minute. Then at 7 o'clock, we'll have a, we'll continue the public hearing. Hello, I got a little echo, John, here. Is that anything you can do about? About that? We're going to continue the site plan, uh, the con we're going to continue the public hearing for a site plan review of 198 Mill Village Road. Uh, then we have a question from Phil Nash about a, a question about processing and sale of cannabis products in a C2, commercial 2 district. Then we'll look at any other business not reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior to the posting of this meeting. We'll set a date for the next meeting and we'll adjourn. Do um, planning board members have any, anything else to add or no. discuss on the agenda? <coughs> then uh, this is what we'll do. And if we can start by introducing, we have uh, one, two, three, four, five of our seven members. So we have a quorum. You want to introduce yourselves? John Baronis. Rachel Blaine. John Wheat. Kip Kamosa. Roger Sadowski. All right, I will read the uh, open the public hearing. So I'd like to open the, um, the public hearing in accordance with the provisions of the Town of Deerfield Zoning Bylaws. The Deerfield Planning Board will hold a public hearing on February 4th at 6 p.m. in the Deerfield Municipal Offices, Con 8 Conway Street, to act on a site plan review application and accompany, accompanying special permit application for a proposed cannabis cultivation, manufacturing, and retail sales facility submitted by Deerfield Naturals, LLC. The location, 10 Greenfield Road, which is Assessor's Map 175, Lot 6, is zoned Industrial 1 and is within the Medical Marijuana Overlay District. Copies of the proposed project uh, application have been available for inspection at the municipal offices during normal business hours. Any person interested or wishing to be heard should appear at this time and place designated. And this was advertised twice in our in our Greenfield Recorder, the paper of record, um, and notices were sent out to abutters, and I have uh, certified mail receipts from many of them looking like it was done properly and with enough advance notice. So with that, I have a... Um, Special permit application. Uh, I have a couple comments from town officials as well. And I'm looking for the site plan review application. All right, then I've got a site plan review, so I'm uh, signed off by the town clerk. So we'll check on the fees. I don't see that right now that they've been paid, but we'll check on that. But at this time, if we can um, hear from the applicants, if you want to give us an overview of, uh, introduce yourselves and give us an overview. Sure. And then we can Tom. take a comment from the public and the planning board. My so. name is Tom Lesser. And I, I did, can I just say, I, then I'll take my hat off, but I mean, we have to say, great win yesterday. Huh? We'll, we'll take the win. <laughs> we'll take it. That was a good one. All right. God, that was I fun. thought it was an exciting game. Everybody said it was boring. I thought it was exciting. There was a lot of back and forth. And, and, yeah. and it was pretty exciting. <laughs> 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 to the end. Until really the end. Until the last four seconds. <laughs> so, 
get that out of the way. All right, so you've got a, a crew here. You'll tell us about the project. Uh, sure. We have, we have the engineer who prepared the plans that are in front of you that you have, the big plans, and we can go over those two. They're up on the board. And we have kind of a, a slide dog and pony Thanks. show just to sort of run you through it. Be good. We've been before the board of selectmen, and we've signed two host community agreements. Actually, sorry, I got I to... Gotta... Slow you down one more time. Our, our clerk who takes the minutes is not here. Oh, Would anybody like to volunteer to take some minutes? I think it doesn't sound like we're going to get to a vote right away here, so uh, there won't be a lot of... I'm sending them straight to Paul. Okay. All right, sorry about that, but we do want to make sure we document this. Sure, we, have, we signed two host community agreements with the town of Deerfield, and one was for the cultivation of um, adult and medical use rec marijuana. And the payment was to pay initially $25,000 and then pay 2% of the gross receipts on a yearly basis. It's a five-year agreement. And we signed a second host community agreement, and that was for the retail sale and manufacture of marijuana products. And the agreement there was the initial payment of $25,000 and to pay 3% of the gross sales. And in addition, Deerfield gets a tax, but this is in addition to that, 3%. This is the host community agreement the plan is to have it in an existing building, which is now on routes five and 10. It's occupied by Atlantic Furniture. And um, it's owned, it's a locally owned business. And it's a retail sale business. It's a furniture business at this point. Um, but they want to supply organic marijuana products to people who medically can use them and also can use them for recreational purposes. And this is a picture of the proposed facility on 5 and 10. It's 10 Deerfield Road. And you can see it's, a, it's gated. It's fenced in. This would be the front, the front of the facility currently would be for retail. Uh, you'll, we'll get to parking, but there are ample parking spaces in front and on the side that are currently lined and currently existed. There will be no changes whatsoever to the outside of the building. Um, currently has that brick facade that you just saw. The parking lot has over 100 spaces has a handicapped accessible ramp. It has handicapped accessible bathrooms. This is the back of the building. This is where the cultivation and manufacturing entrance will be. There'll be separate entrances you won't be able to get from the retail part of the building in the front to the back of the building. You'd have to enter um, uh, right there on that door. And of course, there's no windows, and nobody would be able to see into the facility. Um, this is another photograph of it. Uh, the cultivation area and manufacturing area would be 18,000 square feet, or 18,000 for cultivation, 2,376 for manufacturing. Um, this is an overview, and you can see the retail on the front on 5 and 10, and then the manufacturing and in cultivation in the back of the building. The other tenants, the, the buildings are fully leased, and the other tenants will remain as they are. It's in the overlay district, 
which is depicted on the right here and on the left. You have a relatively small overlay district for retail in um, Deerfield. You can see there's only really, uh, you know, there's Atlantic furniture, there is a parcel north, and there's a small house which is really not an adequate facility for, for retail um, to the <coughs> south. Um, it's on a 12-acre site. It has these different buildings on the site. There is going to be no alteration of the existing utility connections. There's adequate water now. There's adequate electricity. There's adequate sewer. There's a 10-inch water main. There's a 10-inch sewer main. There's going to be no changes to the existing impervious area. So stormwater drainage is not going to be an issue. There's essentially going to be no changes to anything except for the interior of the building that you just saw. Um, they're going to be, they're going to, there's going to be additional plantings along 5 and 10, which will further mask the building from the road. Um, Frontier Regional School is over 3,000 feet from the proposed location. Deerfield Elementary School is over 2,000 feet from the proposed location. Um, other regional, other marijuana establishments are ones in East Hampton, ones in North Hampton, ones in Greenfield, obviously, they're, they're not within uh, 2,000 feet. Um, there's going to be an odor control to ensure that there are no smells out of the building. Um, it's called an, an, an ecosorb system. And it's been used for 25 years, and it eliminates odors through an, through an exhaust system before anything comes out of the building. Ecosorb and this is, delivery you want to hear this. Industries are field-proven tools for facilities looking to eliminate odors indoors or out. Our hydraulic high-pressure and pneumatic low-pressure atomization systems send pressurized Ecosorb formula mixed with water nozzles via supply hoses. These nozzles are positioned to treat odor areas by distributing a fine spray into the air. This allows it to treat escaping gas odors while simultaneously treating odor emitting surface areas. For smaller scale needs or facilities with multiple odor locations, Ecosorb fan atomization systems are available. Whether portable or fixed, Ecosorb fan systems spray the Ecosorb and water mixture into a fan's jet stream blowing a fine mist over a wide area. And we're certainly willing to have odor control as a condition of, of, this, of this special permit. The proposed hours are 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. The people will be employed retail, manufacturing, and cultivation and the total estimated is 50 full-time jobs and the intention is to uh, give priority to people who, who live in Deerfield. I'm not sure that that's mentioned, but it's mentioned somewhere in here and that could certainly be a condition that priority be given for the people except for particularly skilled positions that might have to be uh, employed from elsewhere, but for retail positions and for other positions that don't, that can be trained, we would give priority to people in Deerfield. Um, we're going to have security. There'll be the perimeter alarms. Uh, that are connected to the regional dispatch system. There's going to be motion detection. There's going to be perimeter fencing. There's going to be uh, lighting, but the lighting will go down so it wouldn't bother anyone. 
uh, we're required to have video recordings interior and exterior 24 7 commercial grade locks keyboard access to the facility no one would be allowed in the facility who's working there uh, without a card they all have to go through quarry checks to make sure that they don't have records of any significant source um, there'll be retail security there are very extensive security regulations under the Cannabis Control Commission regulations and this facility will comply with all of them as I indicated before there are two presently two host community agreements for the town of Deerfield which will be an economic benefit to them hopefully a significant economic benefit for everybody concerned um, leases will be maintained for the for Atlantic furniture and Pelicone products and new pro films and Cobble Hill trailer um, so we're not getting rid of people in order to do this and we are creating new jobs there's an existing curb cut there's a dedicated left lane turn from Deerfield Road um, there's 116 parking spaces on the site on the side and in the front and in the back uh, you can see the peak of our traffic volume numbers it's 500 489 in the four hundreds and this the number of people coming in and out of this facility is not going to affect that by any means people will be working two shifts it's if it's open 12 if it's open 12 hours and people will be coming probably right after peak and there'll be a turnover in the middle of the day and they will not and then they'll be leaving so in terms of employees they will not be coming and going during peak hours um, in terms of morning traffic there's not going to be morning traffic it's not going to open until 10 a.m. and in terms of evening traffic there'll be some flow of traffic but it won't affect those numbers in any way if you have 20 people coming in and out in an hour when you have 574 vehicles that's not going to affect that flow there uh, presently has municipal water and sewer there'll be no alteration to those connections including the fire it has multiple existing electrical services at the site it has multiple natural gas services which are going to be able to provide the utilities needed uh, to, for the cultivation of the marijuana it's in a commercially zoned area it's adjacent to harris rebar and directly across from the red roof inn it's historically been used in commercial and industrial capacities and it will continue to be used in a, in a similar way in terms we're not going to make any changes to the existing environmental profile of the site other than new plantings in front which will only improve the site there's no new structures there's nothing that's going to be done to the impervious area that won't be altered so stormwater runoff is not going to be changed or altered in any way um, expected to create 50 new jobs we're going to help out Deerfield in terms of the host community agreement and we're going to give employment priority to residents of the town of Deerfield which will be helpful to Greenfield and we don't see any anticipated adverse effects to, to Deerfield services so that's basically an overview I'm happy to take questions anyone has and if you want to see the plans in more depth we have them and I think you have them in front of you also thank you I'm passing out a uh, as a two-page letter we have several copies so I'll give a copy to each uh, this is from Heritage Surveys Inc. on behalf of 10 Greenfield Road mm -hmm. and when we have a representative here tonight 
if you have any questions about the plans or about anything else that I can't answer. So I'm Mark Reed from Heritage Surveys. Before um, we go any further, John, sure. I think I need to abstain from this particular case. One of my employers does a lot of work for Mark Malone, so I think, actually several of my employers do, so I think it's best if I sit this one out. And I wouldn't Mark want to Malone being? Mark Vallone is the principal Mr. of Atlantic Furniture. Okay, because that name isn't uh, And Mark Vallone doesn't is, show up here. is here. He arrived late from hey, John. Texas. Hey. So you're the owner of the property. And he's the principal also in Deerfield Naturals. All right. Because I would not want to detrimentally, detrimental have a detrimental effect, impact. have a detrimental impact on any of my employers or. Uh, so uh, we can. So I appreciate you making the comment. There's a couple things with conflict of interest. One is just stating it versus removing yourself from the, 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 uh, the hearings and the vote. And so I'd like to see if this is just a matter of stating it in writing or if it really you know, knocks you out. Okay. But, uh, so, I, so I'd ask that if, at least for tonight you continue. I will sit here. I will not say a word. <laughs> I will sit here. Because again, this gets back to um, you know, all seven of us on the planning board are all volunteers. We have different interactions with many applicants that come before us. So sometimes it's hard to, um, you know, if we all sat out because of some issue, then we might not be able to have a quorum sometimes. So I just think maybe we'll send this on to our council and see. So um, let's do that maybe over the next couple of weeks, put something in writing and get a, get a decision on that. But thanks. Anybody else? There's one other thing. I'm not sure that you, this was presented yet, but it's a security overview. And, uh, the chief of security will be uh, former police officer, Chief Man John. Is that in a, that's, that's not in the packet, or maybe not? You know? this, is a, this is an additional. And there will be full-time staff, both in the retail and otherwise, and entry through a single secure entrance. Right. It's a six-foot chain link fence. So before we, um, thank you, before we hear some more, I just want to review what the, um, the planning board's role is in, this is, a, as, as you know, this is a new um, type of business for the town. So we want to make sure we know what, what we're supposed to review and to do it properly. Um, and some things we're going to look into further than others. This is an interesting one because you, you say there's not going to be any changes to the exterior of the building. A lot of site plan reviews, is, that's a lot of what we talk about is I understand. the landscape and the building. So, but then because of the special permit and change of use, that still falls into site plan review and, uh, and our other obligations. So does anybody, um, so we go to our site plan review. Sex number of bylaws, and there's going to be some that I think we're not going to have to spend as much time on as others. And then at the last, um, I think at one of the last meetings, we also kind of looked at some of the marijuana bylaws as well. Because this will help us then to know what to ask engineering and surveys and stuff. <clears throat> so as 4660 is the new marijuana establishments um, 
And the planning board is the uh, special permitting authority, right? Well, up on the top of the page, I thought medical was um, medical is fifty. I think this is the newer one. There's, okay. there's a yeah. I know there was a little change. Um, And the first thing we look at is, is that it's in the right district because we obviously we've zoned, uh, we have a specific zone and this was in the overlay district. It was for medical marijuana and then we switched it to, to regular marijuana when we passed that, that bylaw. So I think some of the um, dimensions, some of the things that we look at, you've already discussed. We, we tried to address each of those in, in, our, in the presentation and in the written documentation. There was a written documentation, there was a written, the application did address each of those. The social economic community needs, traffic flow, adequacy of utilities, neighborhood character, impacts on the national environment, and potential physical. Did you mention signage? Is that uh, the, the plans do do call for a sign. When it, perhaps Mark could explain exactly where that sign is. It will be in accordance with the Deerfield zoning bylaws. Correct. Um, as I mentioned before, I'm Mark Reed from Heritage Surveys, uh, representing uh, Deerfield Naturals. I prepared the letter that you had just mentioned, Mr. Chairman, um, addressing some of the outlined requirements within the bylaw in itself. Uh, there will be a sign that complies with not only the town's bylaw, but the state's bylaw um, and the cannabis rules and regulations uh, relative to marijuana facilities. There are strict guidelines for that also. All right. Any, um, so any more things? We're going to open it up to the public, but you want to? No, I uh, just wanted to kind right. of um, echo what Attorney Lesser mentioned. Is kind of, this is a unique site because it is an existing uh, industrial facility that's been in existence for many, many years, yep. um, probably at least 50 um, years. And there is really no major changes to the uh, site except for some landscape features, which is in the bit, uh, uh, beginning of, or the front of the building, and some new siding in the rear of the building. Uh, if you noticed uh, on that picture, um, there is going to be new siding mm -hmm. put on the rear of the building along the railroad tracks uh, to um, improve the, the uh, existing building uh, for itself, so that it is kind of a unique fit that allows for reuse of an existing building in a new um, business Good. environment. Nice. Yeah. Do you guys just want to introduce yourself and if you have a comment and then we'll open it up. Yeah. I'm Mark Malone, um, a principal of Deerfield Naturals, also own the property at 10 Greenfield Road and also own Atlantic Furniture, which is located down on uh, Route 116. 
Right. Is there any Atlantic Furniture business on this property now? Or? Uh, we have a warehouse that is in, there's about, I think about 40,000 square feet that's there now. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be displaced in, or interrupted by this. Okay. Good. Uh, Matt Plotkin, and I will be the operations manager for Deerfield Naturals. Good. Thanks. So if I can open it up for any uh, comments, questions from the public, and if you, um, we have a microphone up here, actually is the best thing to come up and tell us your name and um, any questions or comments you might have. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, right. uh, tip it up a little bit. There you go. I'm Sarah Allium. I live at 14 South Main Street. So I'm the house right behind the railroad tracks. So I get to see the back of the building. Yeah. Um, so, so your address again? 14 South Main. Thank you. Um, so I have a number of questions. Um, I guess first you talked about the fencing in the back of the building. Is that is the plan for the fencing in the back to be the same in the entire perimeter of the the building the entire or perimeter will be in the chain link fence so okay. no one will be able to get in unless they climb over the chain link fence okay there also will be video cameras in the back that will be 24 7 making sure that nobody climbs in and if somebody does climb in an alarm sounds so when i first moved in there was a lot more greenery there was a large tree that kind of blocked off a lot of the buildings there and it's been since cut down is there anything in the plan that could include more greenery along that fence or anything to kind of, there's a few house, residential houses on South Main Street that I feel like could be beneficial to the neighborhood to have more of? It's certainly something that could, we, could, we, could, we could consider that and, okay. and try to work with you on that. Because another thing I'm thinking about is the lighting. You had mentioned there would have to be, I'm assuming, a lot more lighting. So that's directly impacting the houses, I would imagine, behind if there's lighting that has to be on, is it 24 hours as a security measure, or how does the lighting work? Sure, so there will be a need for security lighting around the building, but the lighting will be what is known as uh, down lighting, um, or so that it's not night sky. So, so but that, it's still on So it's still hours. on, yeah. yes it is, yes it is. Uh, it's not only for the security of the building, but for the police uh, that drive by, and so they have a visual of the building and the site itself. So that is, that is certainly one of the things that we've talked about, and it's in some of the uh, literature. I don't know if it's the state or the town bylaws, but screening was one so that it's not that obvious from, I think we say the street, but certainly from the neighborhood. So that's something we could work on. Okay, that would be appreciated. Um, how tall is the fence supposed to be, or how? So the fence is existing. It's yeah. about six six feet. That high, meets the chain link fence. State uh, guidelines? No, I don't think you need a fence for the state, but the fence is already there, so it's going to remain. For cannabis but, control commission, you, you need a when, when I say state, state fence, I mean, and it has to be at least six feet high. Yeah. Okay. So the area that she's talking about is in the back, yeah. so it's not in the front where the retail facility is, so there shouldn't be anything that's um, explicitly to say that it's marijuana located or customers coming in, you, customers won't be on the back side of the building. Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought you said parking for customers could also be in the back. No, no when they a, say I'm the sorry, back, the, employee, the property is very big. parking in the back. Okay. And the, and the parking is in the front. I think there's 15 or 20 spaces and then there's some spaces on the side also. Okay. So it's not expected there'd be any retail parking in the okay. back at all. It would be as it has been in the past where there's employee parking, the employee to run that door. Okay, because I guess for me, I'm thinking of the fence for security, but also just to block off, like if there were greenery or some higher fence, if it could block off some of the lighting that we're talking about, because it's a lot of added lighting, even if it's down, just a thought. Um, and then a question about the smell and odor. I know you had mentioned the ecosorb. I'm wondering, is that something that makes a lot of noise, or is the misting no, something that... No, it doesn't, it won't make any noise. Okay. And we could, we could have a condition also that it not be added noise okay. off the site. Can trucks coming, are trucks going to be coming in and out, going around to the back for delivery or pickup or... No? I don't think any more trucks than there are now. Okay. You know, now there's a lot of trucks back there because we have the truck parking. 
So in the back where the manufacturing is, mm -hmm. um, there would just be small, small trucks. Okay. I actually think it would be quite a bit less than exists presently. Okay. So on this, on this map, sorry, on this map you've got a hedge of arborvitae hedge in the back. It's at the pre-existing. Is, or is that the back? Yes. Yeah, five and ten. There is some there already, but it doesn't, it's, it's only about like half of, yeah. it's hard to just describe, but it doesn't cover Is that existing? Yeah, there is, exist. there is some, but it's not a, it's not a, um, a full barrier. It's hard to tell because you've got the parcels on one map, but then on the one with the hedge, you don't show where the parcels are, so I don't know exactly how it lines up, but mm. that would certainly be something that would be useful is to have a good hedge where the residences are. I guess I'm also wondering, is smoking allowed on the property if people buy? No. Okay. No, no use is allowed on the property. It's absolutely forbidden. Yeah. That's I'm sorry? Is that a cannabis, yeah, that's yeah. cannabis control commission? That's it. I mean, they could pull your license if anybody uses marijuana on site, on -site whether it's smoking or just swallowing something. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if this is a question for now, but if in the future there were to be a cafe, is that something that we would have to discuss again if it were going to change to include that? Absolutely. Okay. Right now, the Deerfield does not allow, allow social okay. consumption, so okay. that's not. Yeah. All right. I think that's all my questions. Thank you. Just another quick neighborhood is, is a. Um, I thought there was a. A L L. -I children's um, daycare somewhere in the back exactly. out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that on the uh, map? Uh, it's not something? a registered daycare. Maybe so I don't know. She's licensed. Maybe we'll She's been there for five years. So, okay. So you want yeah. to get to that point? Okay. My name is Rocky Foley. I live at 16 South Main Street. I'm her, her neighbor. And the house right on the other side of me is the daycare. And uh, she, she's registered. She's licensed. Um, and I'm just wondering, I'm seeing this red circle around here. It takes in where her property is right here. This red circle, is that just where the people have to be notified? Uh, or what's the tooth? Let me, let me switch to a oops, next sheet. That's just a cover sheet or an index sheet that mm -hmm. has a circle around the, the site in general. I'm, I'm asking for my neighbor. They couldn't be here tonight. And so they just wanted to know what that uh, uh, area is. Like, you know, you said that the uh, frontier is far enough away. Yeah. They wanted to know whether that, uh, the daycare, was the same thing as a school. Mm -hmm. So this, the sheet C uh, 1.0 shows a map of the area. It shows that there are no schools within 500 feet of the property itself. So I'm not sure which property she's at. Let's see, how many did you make that? 20. 20? At 20 South Main? Uh, no, uh, her number was either 18 or 20, I can't. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, this right here it says 20. Whatever that is. That's right. the assessor's indication, a notation for a parcel. All right, so that'll be something to check on. Yeah. Her house is right on the corner of there and that. On the next house, it would be the third house. All right. It's a stuck over. My name is Rocky Foley. Oh, her name is uh, Maggie Woods. It's Mike and Maggie Woods. Thank you. Thanks. Any other comments? Public? If you don't mind. Yeah. Thank you. Just a few questions. Hello, everyone. My Hi. name is Tom Vega. Uh, I live at 38 Eastern Avenue. Uh, Mark, Matt, and Tom, they know me. They've seen me before. Uh, just a couple of concerns. Uh, first off, uh, I didn't see a business plan that showed overhead costs versus projection of sales. 
um, you know, 50 employees uh, is a lot. I just want to know, is there, is there a way to get a copy of that so we can actually see and try and validate uh, what the organization is trying to do, um, if at all possible. Uh, a couple of concerns. That, can I just ask, is, please, because uh, I don't know, is that a, is that a um, requirement of the, of the Cannabis Commission? Or? So to apply, at least from my recollection, to apply for a license, they do require at the CCC level a business plan. Um, so I'd like to, I'd let, it'd be nice if we could see that and validate. Yeah, I mean, we don't, just in my experience, we don't always, we don't get that for part of site plan review necessarily. A special permit, you could probably. Okay. So. Okay. I mean, it's essentially proprietary information. We did indicate how many people were going to be employed in each segment of this. And to, we had two to three in, in the retail. We had several in security. We had uh, several in cultivation. And those are all reasonable numbers. And in the uh, host community agreement, is there, there must be uh, projected sales and things. Out there, there are not. There are. I thought it was. But some and of that income you talked about is based on sales. The, CCC. Uh, the income is a percentage income plus payments of $25,000. Uh, okay. Okay. So you don't, it's a percentage, but you don't know what number your percentage is on. All right. Sorry, Mark. I said the business plan is required by the CCC. Mm -hmm. uh, to my knowledge, not required by any other uh, entity. And you know, is it public information or you know? I wouldn't, I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't think so. I think, I know, it's, it's, it's confidential information by and large. All right. So I guess I would request that, um, I'm not sure it's something we're going to ask for, but if you call the state, they can tell you if they can okay. release it. So. Great, great, great. Uh, another <clears throat> comment or concern I wanted to share, and if I could hear from the panel, that, that'd be great. Um, so in Denver, they had a, a cultivation slash grower that got busted uh, for looping. Um, and I just want to know what for, what, for what? what something called looping. So they would have repeat customers come in um, and they would, in essence, buy and then divert. And so that made the news. And so I want to know how the organization plans to prevent that. About, 200, about two, two, point, two and a half tons, I think, was diverted um, from this facility. I think like 15 or 18 bud tenders were, were charged. Uh, I believe a couple of the owners went to prison. I'd hate to see that here in Deerfield. So what's the game plan to prevent that here? You keep track of all the customers, okay? Um, they're all on security. And you can only buy a certain amount of product at a time, which is a relatively small amount. So it might be if you were buying actually cannabis in the organic form, in the plant form, it probably would be one ounce. They're not gonna allow more than that. So I've never heard of that in Massachusetts. I've never heard of that being an issue. I've never even read anything about it, and I've read a lot about this area. I but, I'm, but it seems like it happened in Colorado. I can just tell you that you know everybody is, their IDs are checked, their IDs are taken, and if the ID kept on coming up and up and up, obviously steps would be taken to let the Cannabis Control Commission know what was happening. Sure, sure. Every attempt would be made to do anything to prevent a license from being revoked or suspended. Okay. It's a great segue into my next uh, point of concern. Uh, MCR was busted twice out of Framingham. My concern is not so much with this organization on that, on that matter, but with the Cannabis Control Commission in that um, they haven't really been active in their inspections as far as I can tell. The last couple of um, times they've caught anyone, it's been a neighbor or I think in MCR's case the last time uh, they got busted a f like earlier in January. Uh, they disposed of some things that they weren't supposed to dispose of from their facilities into a dumpster. Uh, some kid, you know, some teenager caught it, got, got sick uh, from it, and so that's how they got busted. Uh, my concern is the Control Commission um, hasn't really released publicly what they've done with that. What are the penalties for that? And so my concern is oversight across, you know, obviously across the state with cultivation facilities. Uh, so. In light of that lack of oversight, um, you know, I'd like to get some more clarity from the commission around what do we do when there are violators because they're not, they're not being transparent about it. And so, I, you know, it's something I think um, the planning board should consider as well. 
uh, before moving forward. And then the, the last thing I want to say, and then I'll, I'll have a seat and, and, and you know, listen for the rest of the session. Um, the reason why I asked about the, the, the business plan and what that looked like was because California is now considering cutting taxes because they can't compete with the black market. About 80% of their sales was just reported as being what they call under the table. So that's why I was kind of inquiring about the, the sales dollars. And I'm, I'm seeing a, a potential saturation in Massachusetts, especially here in this area with our surrounding towns and communities uh, trying to compete for the same business. And so I, it's hard, you know, as, a, as a business consultant myself, uh, 15 years, it's hard for me to see a business survive in that way unless they expand their customer base. Uh, and so there's a risk involved there as well. So I hope that my concerns are, are you know, duly noted and uh, I thank everyone for, for listening and allowing me to speak. Thanks, I, just, I guess I'm just a little curious about the, the business plan and whether it's successful or not. Um, Again, not something we usually get into in site plan review. Sure. How does that, how does that, so how could that have a detrimental effect? To, so one of the, for the special permit, one of the things we look for is what could be detrimental to the town. We have a lot of businesses that open, try, some succeed, some don't. Sure, sure. So it affects the tax base for the, for the, for the town of Deerfield. Uh, and so all, the, all the, the promises that were made, uh, that are made by any organization, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it, it has that effect. And so uh, if, if there's a business that's at risk, um, is that something that the town wants to try and, and push forward? That's all. Yeah. That, I hope that, that satisfies. Yeah. Like I say, that's not something, you know, we like entrepreneurs. We, you, sure, sure. You can open it. If they're not successful, they close. That's not something. That's a different product. So how does the ink, so, so if you don't mind me asking um, the panel here, the planning board, if the business is not su successful and they have a five-year HCA, what happens? If we're not successful, okay. we're going to close and it will be rented as it is for warehouse space and it will be fully rented. Yeah, I, I don't think they could, someone else couldn't they just come in there, they would have to go through a lot of it's, it's, perso it's, per it's personal, it's personal, it's for, it's for Deerfield Naturals, no one else can go in there. Is another cannabis company allowed to take that space? No. no. Okay. Well, we can't say, they, have to, no, they, they have, have to go to through the whole, the whole process. Yeah. Like through. each so, does not pass along if they, they're out after two years. They can't get somebody else to fill their. I had that question also in the back of my mind because the Northampton one just got sold recently. They had to go through that whole process all over again. Mm -hmm. Just thought it is automatically. Yeah, I think your bylaw is safe. It's not transferable. Right. Yeah, and if it if it doesn't, that's something we could certainly a condition we can put on a special permit. But I'm pretty sure they do. It's they not, do. It's, 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 it's not transferable. Transfer. Good point. Thank you. Um, am Thank I allowed to leave these articles for a review or no? They're just references. Yeah, for planning board members? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah we I make copies if you want. Sometimes read them, sometimes don't. Our host agreement does not allow it to be transferred. Oh, okay. okay. So it, it echoes the bylaws. Yeah. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. Anybody else from the public? So um, planning board members, any uh, comments, clarifications, questions? Oh. The only thing that I have, and, and I don't know what the, the state regulation is, is the distance to a daycare center. Um, does anyone here can enlighten me on that figure? Uh, the state regulations don't include daycares. They don't? No, because the daycares are very small kids and they're not out on their own to be wandering to the... Okay. It's for so it just, it's just It's just schools? Schools. I thought there was language in there where kids conjugate. I don't it, know. It is where kids play, conjugate. Playgrounds. Playgrounds. So and be kids. noted that it is on the other side of the railroad tracks yeah. from the, the site. So as, as far as a concern about anybody <coughs> wandering into the facility, that it would be wandering across the railroad tracks and wandering over the chain link fence. The 500 feet, where is it measured from? Like property line? Property. Yes, from property line. Property line, property line. So that would include those houses that he spoke of, which I don't really know which one it is. But. And actually, there are three parcels that are owned by Deerfield um, Naturals or, or green, you know, the, the applicants um, so that 
it's 500 feet from the three parcels that make up this right. piece of property that are shown on your assessor's map. I think we should just give an opinion on that as well. Yeah, we just yeah. looked that up. It's yeah, I'm, I'm that's actually more, that's I'm, more for your protection than. Yeah, I'm actually not sure that that's it, that that's accurate. That it's from the property line or from the facility, so that's something to look into. All right. Now, with the property being leased, is that going to be an issue with people coming in and tripping the security stuff? I'm somewhat familiar with the thing, their operation. But the people that are leasing the property are going in and out during the day, and so the facility's open during the day. Um, so there's not an issue of tripping the security. Yeah, I didn't know if somebody had to go in at night. Like Pelican, you mean? Yeah, Pelican. Pelican will have access to go and turn the security off to go in. They have their own access code to go in, and then they would be on video as well. But they're not. It's the same so lane, but a different they're not gonna building. Trip it. Correct. So that uh, then leads to another question. So I, I know your property, and I know where the fence is around the perimeter. So besides the marijuana business, there's three other businesses within that compound, correct? So all of the security, excuse me, look like four of them. All right, maybe four. I was going to say. So all, it, all of the employees. Depends on what time. <laughs> okay. But what, where I'm going with this is that all of your employees have to go through all these security checks and stuff like that. And now you're saying that you don't know how many employees, but four of the businesses are going to have employees who have access inside that fenced area. The fenced area is not where the security takes place. The okay. security takes place at entry to the building. Okay. There there's is no regulation there's, that there's supposed to be a security fence so many feet around no. the building, or maybe not fence, some sort of secure. No. no? Okay. I thought there was. No. So actually, the, uh, this can, I can read a couple of um, things we got from town officials also, just yeah. as part of the uh, public comment. Hey, we're right here. I did get something from the police chief, and um, um, I, I actually invited him to this meeting, but he couldn't make it, but he could be available at another planning board meeting. Which, uh, Security isn't something that we're going to spend a lot of time on site plan review, but it's important for residents, so that will be covered. And he said he's, uh, your security folks have been cooperating very well, and so he feels confident that things are going to be, you know, meet all the guidelines, basically. He said that about both of the, both of the sites we're talking to tonight. And then, um, I saw some other public. All right, this is from the highway superintendent. Um, the two sore easements and utility easement must have 24 hour, 365 days access. Do you know what he's uh, referring to? There's, there, is there, are they inside the gate or something? Or? Yeah, they're it, inside the gate. Yes, sir. The, the water main is in there and the sewer main is in there and they have easement to it and they have access, they have a key. Other than that, DPW has, has no issues. Oh, these, these are blank. All right, so we'll need to get some other town officials to comment on it. There's, so there should be one from the select board. So often what we do uh, for site plan review of some of the bigger projects is get a, a peer, uh, peer
peer review. What does these uh, planning board members think about this one? I don't really see the, the necessity to have a peer review. Or there's nothing really. They're not changing anything. The site plan review. I think the only um, review, if you will, is to get some legal guidance as far as you know uh, the distances uh, to the daycare, if the daycare is even an issue. Um, the access. Know what the security perimeter needs to be. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's more meeting the regulations, not so much environmental or impact, because right. you're right, they're not changing much or anything. Yeah. Screening, I guess, maybe is a concern for some people, but. There's smaller trees back there that we can plant more trees on the back side. It's, you know, it, you know, in process, as far as uh, beautifying the back, we would like to get the siding done and get the building in order. Now there's just that insulation on the back, so we'll probably do the siding first and then put plantings. If they know from the plan where you saw the Arbor Vitae's that this plot goes all the way uh, north quite a bit, like over a thousand feet, and there are very, very large trees along that fence. But um, down where the railroad spur comes in, there, from there on, there aren't there aren't trees down below that, and then in on the south side, there's a, a big plot of trees there, which is blocking. So just between the plot of trees and Arbor Vides, we could plant trees in there. We could add that to the uh, landscaping plan. And I don't know what the truck traffic or the traffic is, Mark, but I know she was concerned. You'll have to get some supplies in for the cultivation part of it, right? And is there yeah, loading I, docks that I'm familiar with? Close what by? I was saying is, is now they have these trucking companies in there with, um, besides Pelican who's in the front, but just in the back there's uh, two trucking companies and um, Eversource is in there right now, just on a temporary rental. So there's a lot of activity now with trucks going in and out, Eversource being a lot of activity with trucks going out. When that changes over to Deerfield Naturals, that won't be in the back there anymore. And so the estimated traffic on the back side will be greatly reduced. On the front side, on the Route 5 and 10 side, of course, that's where the retail is. So there'll be a lot of car traffic on the front, which is not yeah. what she was talking about. She's talking about in the back no, side. No, no, I'm going yeah, to You know where yeah, it is. I'm but there will be some activity, but you know, um, marijuana yeah, is not a lot of huge amount no, of trucking. No, I wouldn't think so. I'm not and the access to, for um, the loading docks, the access is still on the front side. It's, so you'll have to bring Yeah, so to they the will, well, it's, on the front side, it's only really on the other side of the building. If you look at the plan, it's just over there. There's a loading docks that are way down that alley, yep. all the way in the back. So that's where anything would be coming in and out of um, the For Deerfield the Natural. Part. Yeah, besides any um, thing that would be secure. Secure would go inside the building, but that's just a van. So I see very little traffic on the back side. And the stuff that you're going to raise is going to be just solely your retail will. Yeah, there's a retail adult use and then a retail for uh, medical use. Right, but you're not going to generate to sell to outside vendors or anything. You're just going to really grow for no. yourself. Yeah. We don't know what the laws are right now on that. Yeah, but, and know, I was going to ask a question. I thought at one time, like, cultivation and retail, they had to be separated. And I don't know if that's We really are true. separated. The, well, yes, you are. But no, but it is separated, and that, that's really an issue for the CCC. So yeah, that's I what I thought. I wouldn't not say our it's an issue for you or for us. It's um, we are separated by over 200 feet. Right. I didn't know between the you're space. You're still like on site. Like I didn't know they're on the same site, but yeah. they're in separate buildings, and actually the space in between you can't get in between there. It's closed off. Yeah. So I, it's I two knew that. separate there spaces. You know the property is it, yes. quite big, and there's a lot of buildings in there, so it's in separate buildings. Yeah. So the security for the retail is different than the security for the cultivation and manufacturing, because the retail is customers coming in, so you have somebody there in the front uh, checking IDs and all of that. But on the back, it's just employee entrance. So well, I knew that was a difference. question when we had with some other people about raising it and selling it there was almost had to be some type of thing but maybe you 
you, you probably checked it out already. Matt, do you know? It's over two. It's, I mean, it's, say over it's two right around two. Two. It's 225, probably. So we've got our list of things we need to check off for site plan, and that's minimize the volume of cut and fill. That, that doesn't seem to problem. Maximize pedestrian and vehicle safety. Minimize obstruction of scenic views. Minimize visual intrusion. Minimize glare of headlights. Uh, minimize unreasonable departure from the neighborhood and scale of the building. Uh, minimize contamination of groundwater. Compliance with all zoning bylaws. So I guess I'd just like to maybe take a little bit of time to go through them. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure I'm prepared to, to vote tonight, but um, is there anything? And then the other thing is that it's change of use. So even if um, it's not going to change, we, would, we do want to make sure that storm drainage, storm drainage in South Deerfield is important. It comes up on every site plan we do. So we want to see those numbers, what you're, where the water is going, making sure it's staying on site and everything. Is that in these plants? There's, yeah, the existing drainage system is shown on the plants. <coughs> so I guess the question is, is it sufficient? Because so, this would be the time that we could, the town could say, upgrade it if need be. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I guess I'd like to have someone kind of take a look at that. Well, well there's a 10-inch there's a main presently there. Um, I guess what yeah. I was going to say is that, you know, that facility has been there for 50 years, and I'm not aware of any problems with anything in that area. Have you heard of anything, Roger? No, and I was just going to say there's new regulations for, like, water going off-site, and this thing would be grandfathered. Up. So I would assume, like you're saying, oh. yeah. not changing it. because you're not, you're not changing it, John. You're not adding any more impervious stuff. We'll change the use. Yeah, well, change, change the use of the use. building, but not change, you're not changing the physical structure. I don't know if I'm right or not, well, but I'm just trying to use common sense, I guess. And that's, so then that was the site plan, and then you got the special permit, which is a little more general, and just to make sure that it's, um, you know, the language they use here is that the um, proposed, the, the benefits of the proposed use outweigh its detrimental impacts on the town and the neighborhood and that there are things to look at, social, economic, community needs, traffic flow and safety, utilities, public services, neighborhood character, impacts on the natural environment, uh, potential fiscal impacts. The, the one thing you did mention, traffic, you said there's no change, but yet you, you want change. You want more cars coming in, I think. Well, so I'm, saying, there, I'm, there saying, I'm saying that they're not coming in in, in the peak morning hours to the extent there are customers after work they're not going to have any detrimental impact if you have 20 customers coming in over a period of an hour when you have 500 cars going up and down 5 and 10. So percentage-wise, it's, it's not Minimal. very big. Okay. And something else would be there, potentially could be there. And what is the estimated um, cars per hour kind of thing? Was 479 or something? No, I mean new uh, into, into your facility. We, 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 don't, we, we, don't have, we don't have a sense of that, but yeah. 20 cars, something like that. Now, if you use the uh, current Northampton retail store, you'd, you'd probably be more than 20 an hour. You could probably it would be way hour. more than 20 an hour, but that's not happening. Number one, we're not in Northampton. Uh -huh. um, number two, Northampton's happening, and there's, I mean, we're, we, are, we have some concerns about another facility uh, going up in a neighboring town. So we'd like to move this forward as soon as we can. Well, isn't there one already going up close by in Whiteley? Well, they're the, talking about that. So I we, thought they got their permits and stuff already. Permits, permits only. Oh, I, 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 right, so we want to move, we want to move forward yeah. to get our special permit too, like they did. Yeah. The other thing I want to mention is there was a facility opened up in East Hampton um, and they did not have anywhere uh, of a problem uh, as far as the traffic that Northampton saw. Northampton was the first. Yeah. And Northampton has no um, parking. They've right. got maybe in 30, 30 right. cars on site. We've right. got 110 spots, and we're not Northampton, and not the first as well. Right. So by the so time those, this opens, those I would be, I, I'm assuming, kind of something maybe in the host community agreement is that if there is a need for traffic control, then you pay. You, you pay the police or something and 
bring that we up. We only Sorry. hope so, John. Uh, that's why I'm just saying. That. It's, I just think that should be a condition somewhere, either with us or yeah. with the. Well, it's not a condition of the host community agreement, so if it's going to be a condition, it's going to come from you. It, it is be, in it the host community a, agreement already. You know, it would be a safety. That if there's any safety. anything that comes up that um, affects the town, that we have to take care of it, that's already in the agreement. Okay. So that's, I don't see that about. as an issue. All right, so what would the planning board members like to do with this? Well, I think that we need a few things to check with council. That's my only, I'm not. So an engineering review, we don't, I think we're okay without that. <coughs> <coughs> All right. So we can get, um, we can get some input from council pretty quickly, so that's about distance from everybody. Mm -hmm. I'd like to get more town officials. Um, yep. Fire, you said select board. I don't see it here. Select uh, board. We, we basically, so said fire. support. So. Right. I'm going to put that in the notes that you report that. That's okay. Like, <laughs> we'll take your word for it. It's in the overlay district, so I think we sort of answered some of those questions when we decided to make it an overlay district. Right. right. And then what, what can we, um, can, can you agree to some, uh, that screening around the back perimeter? Uh, and, and part of it is, is I, again, I'm not quite clear about how the traffic flow is gonna be back there. It's no cars or so just trucks? Yeah. First of all, as far as the screening goes, it's not really an issue to us. If you wanna make it a condition of it, then just make it a condition. Yeah put screening up I mean it's it doesn't matter to us what I was saying is we'd like to have the siding up you know this process takes a long time as you know we've been here time and time again through the select board and then into this so okay, this, then is the you first, have, this is this the first is, public hearing for this for, us for the planning board right Just to be clear <laughs> We don't I feel time didn't in say I mean, that. I said the you, process <laughs> takes a long time. And so the CCC process is also going to take a long time. And so that the facility will look quite different by the time it opens than it does right now. The siding will be on the back and, you know, the whatever is done out in the front for the plantings. And so if the condition is that you want plantings on the back along the fence, then just put it in and, and vote on it. We're good to go. So let's, uh, so I would, I would want that and that's part of the, of the special permit. You've got the neighborhood issues there. So I would want to see screening uh, along the back, not knowing exactly what's back there. I would say certainly between the houses and the property. You, you have. Well, I just like in terms of screening, are you talking about security or also yeah, Ar Arboviti, the, uh, the, the Arboviti hedge that they say is there, it would like got extended to be between all of the residences. I think it's and, on the drawing. The it is, and that's, that's what I'm saying. So, it, But just so it's it maybe it needs to be a little bit longer than the way it is on the yeah, drawing. that's what right. I said. Okay. I think put it in there and we'll put this, the plan. Well, I'm asking you to put it in there. I want, I want you guys to put it in okay. the plan. So. Oh, yeah. add to the plan? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And so just stretch it out. So Because like I say, the plan with the... Our Raviti don't have where the houses are, and that one with the house doesn't have the hedgerow, so we just so we can show it. put those two together and we're all mm -hmm. set. Yeah, on the landscape. Yep, we can do that. We can add it to the landscape plan. All right. Uh, basically, it's, it would go from the spur, the railroad spur that goes into it, uh, which shows up on the plan, as well as the Arboviti row uh, to the south, to the existing woods that are located in the back corner of the property. Oh, yeah. there it is there. Oh. So yes, we can add that to the landscape plan. Oh, yeah. All right. What do we want to do? Well, I, I, I kind of don't want to hold them up a whole lot, but I, we do have a few questions for the attorney. I don't know, do you want That's to schedule another uh, mid-month meeting? Uh, do this, get our answers, and then we come back. Because I, I feel that, you know, going through the bylaws about all the requirements, they're, I'm they're satisfied on. with them. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, so we could give a two week yeah. yep. deadline. And I mean, in, in all fairness, just to kind of help them along, it, it's, I'm looking at not so much helping them, but it helps, it could help the town. Sure. It could. Mm -hmm. uh, because if another 
facility comes in before them. We want to get there we first. We're just dragging our feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd like to get we don't want to drag our feet. Don't no. want to drag our feet. Oh, we want to do it correctly. But we don't right. want to also. All right, so we'll check with the attorney and we'll check with um, the other town officials mm -hmm. and we'll have that. Is later. there anything else you need from us besides the updated landscaping plan for the next meeting? I didn't double check, but you've got the parking and all the numbers. Is that yes. clear about? The, they're all shown on the plans. Okay. Uh, okay. And there's a note on the plans with the number of parking spaces um, that are that are shown on the plan. And it's yes. Both for employees and um, customers. customers. Yeah. yeah. And 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 I could be way off with this thing, but on your own, check into that whole security thing. Uh, as on, far the as, uh, on the gate. On the gate and. All the other businesses have an access inside the secured area. I know it's not in the secure grow facility, but I just I don't know, and out. I don't want to find out that it is one way, then have you guys come back and not be clear on it, have to send you back. Have that miss, miss. Matt, can you make a note on that? Yep. Do you, you understand what I'm talking about? Hey, yes. I got it. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. And the regulations regarding the security fence right. will be prepared before the next meeting. Okay. okay. And what did you say about signage? Is, is, any, is anything on the plan now? You said it's going to be within regulation, which is obvious. Right, but we like exactly. to see it. We like to know what it is also. So, so um, would it, would it be on the building or on the fence or on the entrance? Or? I mean, pe people should yeah. know what's Just there. Just add to the plan, wherever you want. The, the yeah. signage, add that to the plan. Right. And you just follow the bylaws about sure. the size. Yeah, yeah. that's all. And then, um, again, I thought we were going to have more time to look at this, but the, the whole trash pickup and all that is all in there, and that's also within the gated area. The issue of the trash from marijuana is regulated by the CCC. It, it is not in there right now. We have trash inside the right, building. Right, you get trash, and then you have cannabis. That's a separate, that's a separate right. thing. All right, so can we make a, um, do we, someone want to move to make a motion to hold, continue the hearing until? I move to continue this hearing on Deerfield Naturals until February 18th, if that's good for everybody. Hold on. It's the third Monday. It's the holiday. Third Monday. That's the holiday. It's a President's Day, so can you meet on a holiday? Nope. nope. Not if the town hall is closed. God damn. Mm -hmm. I know. We seem to bump into a lot of holidays. Plus, you guys are all invited to my house for dinner. Tuesday, the, oh, that's right. They're all invited to my house for dinner. Right. So they can't come because they're all at my house for dinner. So the 19th? The 19th. What are we having? Good, good food. It's always good food there. You can't come. My house. The 19th. That's what I call it. The 19th. The 19th is good for me. I can Tuesday, do it. Tuesday, 19th? Yeah. Correct? As far as I know. What time, John? Seven. Seven. Seven sounds good. Seven. Works for at least one of you or? Yes, it does. I won't be here. But Matt will be. Yep. And then we can get these revisions done and have them submitted to you before then. That would be great. Yep. All right, give me a motion to continue this public hearing until um, February 19th at 7 o'clock. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oppose, abstain. And I'll ask you guys to sign Good. Did you abstain? a continuation. I have an abstention. Okay, uh, sorry. One abstention. Yep. Um, I'm, I'm writing this down. Do you have the attendance sheet? I do. Oh, he on, has it. In the back of that, I think, is a continuation Yes, sheet. it is. Tom, did I? I gave that it, clipboard. I think it got passed around. Nice for you, Duper. Is the there a, sheet? Does someone have a sign-up sheet around somewhere? Thank you. I just kept it going. <clears throat> oh, great. Thank you. That's usually I have to do that. <laughs> it's self. It's self. Self-circulating. Is your, are your, is your name there? I'm here. Well, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> but we need you to sign. Yeah, we need is, you, is. actually, I think. Um, Who's on Mr. that? Mr. Plotkin, because you're on the. I see the one that's on the. Uh, yep. Wow. <clears throat> Continuation. And there's something here. Yep, there is. Yeah,
So, so we said two, 219. 219, yep. So, yeah. All right, you want to sign this then and um, applicant's name and then your signature on today's date to make it official. All right, we'll see you on the 19th at 7 o'clock. Should have everything. Okay. Closed. Thank you. Thank you. Should have everything locked up. Thanks. Who will you be contacting in legal counsel? Um, Adam, Adam Costa. Costa. Yeah, we we'll use Adam. Lisa Mead and Alan and Adam Costa. Okay. Same okay. Lisa, Mead, Bob, Mead. Mead something something. Mead something Costa. Yeah. No, I don't think Costa's name is on them. Yeah, I should, it is was he? the last time I heard. Oh. Yeah, I thought it was. Good, Mead, Good for him. Because no. actually, the exact is any 500 foot requirement involving the gate here. It doesn't, it's not applicable to cultivation. It's not applicable to the yeah. And arguably, it's applicable <laughs> only to uh, a medical marijuana. Yeah, almost that Spencer. I can talk to them about that. Yeah. Should we uh, note that what time Max came? Because I got it. Uh, I did. I'll just, I'll just talk to them directly. As we did during the house. You know, Pat gave them to me because um, she happened to have them, and mine was like the outdated ones. Please yeah. forward. Right, so you have the med you have to get the medical one, right? Yeah. You don't have the manual one? No. So we need to get it. Yeah. Well Barbara's gotta have them because these came after the um, you know, after the vote at the town. All right, let me put Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Put stuff back on there. I know our oh, bylaws is there, but I wonder I don't if know what this one. the state, we need more. Um, whether it's in slightly or dear fruit, if they have to be so far apart. You just take the they do, tenant sheet off of it. And you did. Put it down. That's what I've been told. Do you want it? Oh. That should go in there. That should go in there. Yeah, that should go in there. That's That's another one for the next right. one? Yeah. 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 yeah, it should be yeah. so concerned on it. No, I understand that, but I'm just saying. All right, I'd like to open a second uh, my, public hearing. Not my G John, I thought somebody, there was something in there where somebody wanted to speak about something. Oh, um, we didn't do our public comment. You're right. What? But we're running a little late. Should I, what do you want to do? Well, is it fair to make that person hang around? Oh, do you think there's someone here? Oh, wasn't there something on the agenda that somebody wanted to, maybe I... So let me just quickly, on our agenda, we often have a time when people from the public, if they have a quick question or a comment, they can do so. Is there anybody that has a comment or a question about something that's not on tonight's agenda? This would be the quick time to do that. Oh, I'm sorry, it was number seven, it's actually... Oh, uh, okay. No. So I'd like to open the... Uh, continue the public hearing of the site plan review for project at 198 Mill Village Road. SunMass Inc. has submitted a proposal for a cannabis cultivation facility on land currently used for agricultural purposes located at 198 Mill Village Road and including abutting properties at 196 and 200 Mill Village Road. Assessors map 94 lots 459, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. We met about this a month ago and um, we could do a quick um, update, and the main update from our end is that we have um, had some delays, unfortunately, and I apologize for that. We had said that we wanted, we needed to hire a, um, a, a peer review engineering firm, and I think at that point, you remember, we had a um, assistant town administrator who was dealing with that, and we did get the process going, um, and we got two 
companies who said they could do it, but we were, we were not able to uh, actually hire them and have them start yet. So um, we don't have a lot of new information from our end. We, we can, I think we can get right on that. I checked with the town today. Is there anybody here from the town? Maybe, maybe Wendy can give us a quick update. If West, Weston and Samson. No, the Weston and Samson, uh, there were two. There was Weston and Samson and I think, geez, somebody else. And um, it seemed like they would, could both do the job. One was uh, at a, what we thought was a more reasonable price, so we were going to pick the reasonable price, which is Weston and Samson. Do you know if anybody's contacted them? I do not know. All right, so probably not. At the Conservation uh, Commission the other night, they did give us a copy of the uh, proposal from Weston and Samson. Oh, so good. We have seen that. All right. Is that meet your expectations, or? We're satisfied with that, and I also have a letter for you tonight on behalf of the applicant that says we'll cover the cost of it. All right. And we also brought you an envelope. Thank you. Even the stamps. Put it right in the mail to them. request that you sign a letter to Weston and Sampson tonight and drop it in the mail. I think that would be a reasonable request. So let me just remind the... Uh, the board um, and, and I'm sorry we've also have a letter uh, we drafted a letter from you to Weston and Sampson yeah. uh, saying uh, go for it that's good where's the rubber stamp yeah, can you, yeah. Can you <laughs> my signature there too <laughs> we didn't quite take that liberty. Uh, okay. what do you think's going to happen here um, so, so you, you knew this was coming, I guess. John, just so you know that, uh, you know, we had discussions at our last meeting about sharing uh, the peer review with the conservation. They had not moved forward with it, so I took the liberty at their meeting to say that we would do this and that our peer review would do the wetlands or whatever stormwater. Um, Which was in the RF. Right. P, so good. So they're not going to get involved with it. They're just going to look at the information that we get, okay? All right. Is that... Um, we, uh, Everybody good with that? Because sure. you, had, you had said that I think between Connor and me we could do that between meetings and we just didn't right. get to it. Does everybody know that Connor ended up leaving the yes. employment of the town? Yes. And I don't know if it was the planning board that scared him away. Yes. I'm not taking responsibility, but. Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> it was. Smartest thing he ever did. Um, <laughs> you want to bring up the, uh, the, the lot right off? And yeah. Do you guys have any more update on the on the lot? How the combining? You're going to do an A and R, and you're going to see about that uh, the APR. Land? I'm not aware of there any issues on that. We we we, we, we anticipate that you'll make it a condition of the special permit that the, the, the all the parcels remain in common ownership. Right. Could right. we get a copy of that deed? Well, sure. Just a second, John. Yeah. Uh, I've had discussions with the town attorney, and his opinion, and, and I made him. I made it known to him that you informed us that you had a legal opinion about the lots. He's yet to see it, and he'd like to re review it. But he informed us that those lots are not, even though they're contiguous and owned by the same person or will be owned by the same person, we can only consider the actual one lot and the coverage there. So it exceeds the zoning bylaws because it covers too much of the property. So if you want to use those other parcels of land as part of this, it all has to be on one deed, and it has to be according to our bylaws. I've read it, you know, under the same ownership and the same as be defined by Mets and Bounds, and recorded as a deed as a recorded plan. So you need to work on that. So common ownership is not satisfactory to the town. Correct. Is that what you're saying? Correct. Uh, I'm not aware of any legal authority on that. Did he cite any legal authority uh, to support that? They're not. They're separate lots. Well, yeah, lots of there are one to six separate lots involved in this project, right? Right. Six. But you want you, there's one lot, and I'm, for the sake of this conversation, yeah. I'm going to call it lot A. You have greenhouses, and you want to add buildings to this lot the size of the greenhouses and the lots and all the improvements is going to far exceed the 30% coverage of that lot. Hence, we embrace the additional land. But they're different lots. 
Yes, but it could still be a condition of the permit that the remain in common ownership is so that the, the purpose but in this case, of the then it, that violates our building, it, it violates our zoning bylaws because it's now, it's, you know, it's extra land. It's not, that lot is not large enough to support that type of coverage. So the only way you can achieve what you want to do is you have to take those six parcels and make them one. Um, I think our lawyer said there's something that you don't even have to come for an a &R. We called it a, an, okay, 80, consolidate land an, 80, a, an 81X, maybe, I think he said. Yeah. And you can you combine them and you just go to the register of deeds, but then it's all on one deed. That's, and that would be satisfactory that way. But well, we can do that if necessary. Yeah. yeah. Should, Did I see you reading from the zoning bylaw? I just yeah. was curious where. It was 5,700 under the, uh, uh, I think it's definitions of the lot. That's what that was. was that the only issue relating to the lot set? Well, I think the initial one was the APR. Uh, well, yeah, that's in, that, yeah. yeah, that's that's you'd have to deal with that. All that's where the, the right. masks are. Right. Yeah, I think that creates an even greater problem because well, how can you take a lot line out of a, an APR you, you, piece of land and now you just have a. a well, I that mean, that would be up to them to figure that out. You know, they would have to make whatever. Concessions with the state or the federal but government, and, um, Mr. You know, well, and and I don't, you know, and I know things can be changed, but as of, and I could be mistaken, but from the documents that I saw that went through the lawyer, that there's federal money on the the property where the greenhouses currently are. Is that no. correct? No. Not quite sure what you mean. What's that? Not quite sure what you mean. There, there's a lien. There's a lien, a federal lien on the property where the green. Oh, you mean like a mortgage? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's being paid off when the when the property sells. Right, well, so, yeah, I'm just <laughs> saying. It's okay. that. Well, there's federal money that's <laughs> right was lent to the, some right, organization. Right. Oh, I think yeah. There's some yeah. financing from a pioneer. Uh, right. Right. Through down to yeah. Connecticut. Yeah. That's it'll be paid off. So. Yeah. Okay. Issue. But were you affiliated with the land trust? Sure. So you would know if you could use that APR land to make up I've a difference? I've never heard of prohibition from using a land like that. Now, we, I'm not saying we could subdivide the land, but we're not looking to subdivide the land. I, I know, but consolidating it. you can't no use it for anything for agricultural. I think that would be the issue, and I guess if you worked with them and there is no issue. I, oh, it's going to remain an agricultural use. That's well, I know that's what you said. I well, don't understand, <laughs> but I don't know if you can do it technically on paper. That's And we probably need something from the state that, that runs this organization saying, yes, it's fine to do this. Well, if they combine the, if they combine That's another the whole land, issue. Yeah, but if they combine all the lots, then they would have to deal with that. But am I mistaken to think that to get the land out of APR so you could combine them, you'd have to take other land and make up for it? That's not even in, in, in the works. Uh, we're, I, not, we're not even thinking about taking it out of APR. Like well, here's here's a paragraph. Let me read it real quick, Kip. I don't know, you know, either way, but it's a paragraph from the Cannabis Control Commission guidance for farmers on page seven. Uh, the question is, if my property is subject to an agricultural preservation restriction, may I use it to cultivate marijuana if licensed? And the, the, the answer from the CCC is farmers should determine the type of APR they have if it is an APR regulated by 310 CMR and administered by the uh, Mass Division of Agricultural Resources, MDAR, the farmer may need to get approval from N MDAR and or the municipality. If it is a co-holder of the deed restriction prior to the engaging of the cultivation of the marijuana, I, I kind of screwed that sentence up, um, but Similarly, if the APR is held by a conservation organization or a municipality, the farmer may need to determine whether the cultivation of marijuana and related activities such as the construction of structures is considered permissible under deed restriction. Farmers are encouraged to seek legal advice. There will be no marijuana cultivation on the APR? Well, yes, there will be because the, the, the line will need to be taken out. Now you're cultivating marijuana on that piece of property. Um, <laughs> we'll deal with it. Yeah. So, okay. so we'll deal saying, with it. But this uh, is, we've talked about the yeah. issue, and I, again, I thought 
We did want to get something from Mass Department of Ag. Well, we've we given to notice get, to the Mass Department of Ag. We, we, given we believe you and everything, but we need written documentation. Well, I hope that the next, perhaps so. next time we come, you'll see a uh, a uh, waiver of the of the of the uh, right of first well, refusal. So, I guess I it's an approval by the. This has kind of gotten out of. It's, it's kind of grown here. My the the question to our attorney is, can at can all of these lots be combined to meet the coverage requirements if you want to? And he says, yes, but they have to do that. They can't come in and say, we have lot A and it's this big, and then we're gonna add lot B and C. They all have to be made as lot A. In the review, if you have three different lots, and each lot is 10 acres, we, that's not acceptable. We have to have one lot that's 30 acres, if you know what I mean. So we say. Uh, didn't the review attorney specifically look at that? Yeah, that's. I mean, yeah. we paid this Mr. Dubendorf uh, for legal review, right. and he 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 said it was fine. And, and he submitted uh, that last meeting, didn't he? Well, I haven't seen a written report. He gave well, his report to this is uh, this is Calisansky. what our lawyer said. That if yeah. there's a legal opinion out there to support your claim, that we need to see it to re it needs to be reviewed. All right. So, have you spoken with Mr. Kalaseski? Uh, with regard to his conversation with uh, Mr. Dubendorf? Uh, no, but it doesn't really yeah. matter, Dick. It, it's, it, what matters is right. our lawyer needs to see this right. to see if there's enough ground for the town to be doing it proper. It, you know, it's, it's not, not us. We, you know, this is a, All right. I'll ask, us. I'll, Mr., I'll ask Mr. Dubendorf to put in writing what he yeah. told and us. And if further. you could for, have him forward it to, um, to the town administrator, and then she could forward it on to our town council. That, that would probably be the best way, so we're not guessing at you know, what's, sure. what's happening and stuff. Did you guys see this from the Cannabis Control Commission, guidance for farmers? I don't know. That's, that's some of what John was just talking about. So It's page 7, John, the paragraph. And this is on their website or something? Or? Yep. Uh, all right, so hopefully we'll get... We'll get through this. So we are, um, we, just to let you know that in this packet, I did have the form that we're going to send to um, Weston and Sampson. So we'll get them on this tomorrow. I'll email it to them as well as mail it to them. Thank you. And um, ask them if they can finish it by um, in two weeks. Hopefully they can. And if they could come to that meeting, we could really move it pretty yes, quickly. Please, so please if you can take care that. of this land thing sure. yeah. in that time, that would be great for all of us. Sure. So I think um, if, if we're going to have a meeting on the 19th, can we have it sure. deal Why with not? these two issues? Yeah. Huh? Does that work for you? You're still starting at 7. How is, can you get, I'm, I think the other one will be rather quick. I do too. I think so. I'm just <coughs> asking a question. All right, so let's, I mean, it's best, better for us if we can post them both at 7 and then just take, yeah. take that one, do it, right. and then get to this one. So sure. it'll be a little after 7, but we'll call it 7 so that we can move right into it. All right, and then I think that, well, so hopefully those will be the only two issues we do. So um, we, can, we can make it that. It's not a regular meeting. So right, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. All right, so you want to make a motion? Um, sure. Uh, what's the name of this one? Oh, I forgot. Um, continue. Like Sun Mass. Uh, I make a motion to continue uh, the public hearing uh, and site plan review for Sun Mass Marijuana Cultivation Facility until February 18th, 19th, 19th at 7 o'clock. Okay. I have another continuation sheet here. Um, so, um, did you second it? I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Oh. You John, you good on this one? I don't need to abstain on this this one. All right, let me get you to sign a uh, continuation worksheet here. There it's, oh, look at that. Let me go to what? Huh? So the only questions we have is lot configuration and 
everything else has been answered. I just want well, to make the other, the other no, no, so they need to come up with those answers for yeah, our next and then meeting. The I just want to make gonna, it very yeah, clear. The engineer's going to look at the storm drain, oh, yeah. storm yeah. water yeah. stuff. Yeah. I, mean. uh, I, I have no problem with meeting in that amount of time, but do you think that Wes and Samson will get their stuff that, done? That's what I'm going to have to ask them tomorrow. I'll get on the sign. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Did you send the information to them, or probably not? I have it because well, we right. We've well, been they, waiting for you. Yeah. They, well, they made a quote on right. saying they could do it. Right. They didn't say how long it would take them, but okay. you know, right. yeah, they said two weeks. Okay. In their in, yeah. Their, yeah. in the letter. Okay. Yeah. Oh, good. And if it's possible, I'd appreciate just talking with them to make sure they have all of the yep. information that they okay. need yep. um, in case there's anything that's um, additional. I'm sure you have their contact information, so yeah, you know, give it a few days and then give them a call and see if we got any. Do you have a copy of their letter, of their proposal? I yes, it, I, I have it in the okay. thing here. Um, so I got it in here somewhere. So this is a site plan and a stormwater permit and a special permit. Yes. And so we'll also try to try to draft up some decisions because that's what takes us long and that's what Pat Smith always did for us. Um, and now we want to do the, the different decisions separately, site plan review, special permit, and um, stormwater separately. We, we get into trouble not doing that. John, what you said? She used to do for it. She's not with the cog anymore. No, Pat she retired was, two weeks ago or a couple oh, weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we celebrated her at our last meeting. You weren't here. I think. Um, we thanked her. Yes, she was a big asset. So, was somebody going to take her spot? We can contract with someone else from there. We were hoping this, that our administrative person would do some of the work. So, we're not sure where that stands. Diana's been on out mm -hmm. for the past 10 days, so I'll talk to her tomorrow, too. You might be able to do some of this. So that's the 19th because you heard the story, the 18th is a holiday. So it's a Tuesday. It's not a story, it's the way it is, I guess. All right, can you sign that uh, continuation? So I, we're using Sun Mass, is that the? Sun's Mass. Sun's, Sun's Mass. What, do I, what should I put in for applicant name? So that's Sun's Mass or whoever your Sun's official? Mass. Sun, Sun's Mass. Let me make sure we're all on the same page. I think. And that's today's day, 2 4. All right, thank you. So we'll see you on the 19th. Okay, thank you. Hopefully, we'll have Thanks. everything. It sounds like you're going to email it, so maybe you don't need that. And this is all we have this on on uh, email too, yes, right? Yes, you do. All right. Thank you. All right. Wendy needs to sign this. This is asking Wes and Sampson to start start work on it. So. Second sheet, I don't know. No, the, the sign in sheet. Yeah, let's get the sign in. There it is. Yeah. Oh. Let's see, put this. Nope, oh, that's, yep. That's this, right. If I have her, it. If I have her sign this now. Yeah, it. Wendy, can you sign this? Um, so, uh, well, I don't know if um, Connor might have prepared this, actually, or, or Diane or but someone. It's, it's inviting in. Justin and Samson. It's asking them to. Mm -hmm. It was all okay. already done up. And I don't know. It's all a right. place where you kind of administer to sign it. So. That's where. Uh. 
Let's see. I'm bored. Well, I'll take a break. Rachel, is that the sign? You can do it. And then what? Yeah. You want me to send it? And then mail all this. And they gave us a uh, stamp season. I thought they had signed enough. in. Are we getting a Well, a lot of people, I saw it getting passed around. I don't know. So where is it? I asked for it, but they. Did you know? I can have that. Yes, we didn't get it. I made it clear tonight that this is what we need. So it's going to take a few minutes. Hey. You want to talk about um? take all this back to you? More cannabis? What? You want to talk about more cannabis? More cannabis, yeah. I uh, never realized marijuana was so complicated. Yeah. A lot of questions always after uh, you discuss it, too. What's that? A lot of question marks after all the discussions. Yeah, it just keeps coming up with more stuff. I certainly don't want to be in business myself, but like I told you on. So just say your name and um, ad, you know, address or something, I guess. My so. name is Phil Nash. I live in Florence, but I have property up in the C2 district in the rail yards. Old uh, industrial building, kind of underutilized. And uh, I watched your marijuana laws unfolding over the last couple of years. weren't sure where that was going to go. And uh, since then, I get inquiries monthly, almost weekly, about renting my building for cannabis cultivation, whatever. And uh, I always tell, send them to the town, and I. I believe I'm not in the marijuana uh, overlay district. I'm in C2, and I just see some of these other RA, rural agricultural. Um, when I look at some of this, it seems as though that district, with its remoteness and lack of schools, nearby neighbors, almost seems uh, more suited. Dick has always told me, he's telling me years ago, you should have marijuana up here. And, uh, and he sent me to you to see about uh, getting in the zone, what the process might be. I realize I'm a little uh, after the fact mm. here, but uh, I get the inquiries and thought I would uh, come here and see what the process might be. And you've got a lot of marijuana zone here, a lot of applicants, obviously, but uh, given my uh, inquiries, I thought I would at least uh, make an inquiry here. Yeah, so thanks for coming. So we. It was several years ago that we started the process of uh, developing bylaws for, first we did the marijuana and then we did what they call recreational marijuana. And, and we came up with um, the zones that we have. And I know, and I actually ran this by the chief of police and he actually responded saying that we, uh, at the time when we were doing this, um, we, were, we wanted it to be a place that could be secure and that the police could get to um, the response time could be good, and he says that the East Deerfield Railroad Yard has one of the longest response times for police, as it is on the extreme opposite end from the police department. Our goal was to create minimal areas which would have a minimal impact on the community. But then he goes on to say, this was you know several years ago, however, even in the past three years, times, uh, times have changed, and it seems as though we are moving towards a more consistent market that would allow a variety of areas to cultivate. So a further look at zoning, you know, is a, is a possibility. So that's basically what we'd be looking at is if we wanted to entertain, uh, it would have to go through all the zoning changes. changes, which would include a couple public hearings and then a town meeting vote. Um, that's what I understand. Yeah, ultimately, let's go through the town meeting vote. Yeah. Uh, I spoke to Dick once. And I, at one point, we were in the impression it would just take a special permit, but now I realize it's, it's no. much more than that. Much more than that. Um, I, speaking for myself, I am no, have no appetite to, <laughs> to redo our, our bylaws in the next, um, certainly before the next annual meeting, which is in May. Uh, so that, to me, is not a possibility, unless anybody. The property you own, is it the old feed facility? Correct. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's just an old industrial building, yeah, kind of limit, limited use. Yeah. and. Uh, Every realtor, everybody I have come in, this is perfect for marijuana, you know, and they like the remoteness, but I do agree, it's probably the furthest spot away from the police department. Um, but it's a great building, I've visited it, it's lots of space, high ceilings, uh, <laughs> remote. Dogs. And there's, like I said, there's... Easier to, it's starting to, easier to get to, the, is the bridge finished up there? The bridge is done. We have a new yeah. bridge getting over to the... Yeah, there's really virtually no houses nearby, no schools. Uh, the biggest smell is the locomotive, so yeah. I, I think yeah, we, yeah, when 
I, I read all these problems, and uh, wow. I can understand if I was living next door to some of these operations, I'd be concerned. So basically, um, do we want to do anything about it? Give Phil any advice? Um, wish him luck. Well, and I, I don't think we're going to do anything this cycle at all. Well, so. he'd have to make a request, I think, if he wanted to get the zoning right. changed. And Which I don't even know. Is there a formal? What do residents do? He, he can, can put it. Of he can put on the warrant himself. He can get signatures. signatures. I'm not sure. No. He can for well, that kind of zoning I think the process is he would have to come. Anybody has to come to the planning board. Uh, the signatures and, have to come to us. You know, even if we vote negative against it, it's considered that an action by the uh, planning board. Uh, and then it could go on the warrant. Then it could go on the warrant, yeah. but you'd have to have so many signatures on it. I thought if you had enough signatures, it, you can just put it Not in the to warrant. change Not zoning. for zoning. It has zoning to go through different the planning than, yeah. board. But if somebody, if he brings, we could all say absolutely no, we hate it, it's a stupid idea. But it that's, still that's considered an action by and our, then, this. Yeah. And, and then, then he, he could, could, then he could go and bring it to the, bring it to the I don't, town meeting. I don't live in town. I'm not sure if I'm willing to go as far as to start soliciting, yeah. knocking yeah. on doors for it. But that's why I'm coming to you and beginning the conversation. So I, what I would suggest is, for example, we did solar bylaws several years ago, and we know now we need to make some changes in it. So actually, we're going to make some changes in that. It could be that right. in the not too distant future, we say, oh, we need to make changes to the marijuana ones, and then we would remember this and put it out there. That's one way to go. OK. Um, but as far as pushing it, I, yeah. uh, you might be one of the, well, other people might push it, too. There might be other zones where people want to go. Um, you could grow it there. I could what? You could grow it there. I don't think so. No, it's not. It's not residential. It's, it's yeah. The agricultural residential, and that right. I'm C2. That, that steps away from being yeah. in a tight knit area. So. So that is a good point. So what did we? Um, where did we put it for? Uh, but if, for what I understand, you got to clarify. The zones are this RA residential, rural, agricultural, and then the industrial park. But the C1, C2 seems to have been so no. skipped over. But for the cultivation? Yeah. For anything. Cultivation, everything. It's all N. So C2 is definitely no, even with a special permit. Yeah. Yeah, you can't. That's, that's what allowed I to play. Thought, Well, yeah. Well, then you get in the variance thing, but that's a whole other. Um, and then marijuana. I don't think it would be suitable for retail because I can see Wait, where okay. these last know. operations. So you want you want eyes on it. I'm well, the first to admit it's not suitable. Off the beaten path, unless you are like. Oh, overly just two dollars a pack that's, or whatever. Uh, into how they're it's going to sell it. You know, maybe you get people coming up there, yeah. but you're off the beaten trail. So. All right. They're also. Right, and then so he's not in the overly district. Right. Okay. But I think we should send you other businesses that might be. Uh, I would appreciate looking that. for a spot like that. Yeah. Does everybody yeah. know it's a it's a great sort of commercial industrial kind of area up there? Yeah. So. Okay, so your position is that um, you don't want to address it now, but I guess at some point when you update, change those laws, you would do that? Yeah. And uh, I realize that's uh, constantly evolving. Any idea when that might be? <laughs> if I had to make a guess, um, if these ones that are in front of us now get passed, I, I doubt we're looking to add more sites. I can see it. Like, that's just kind of a group. Take I, I think the market might be saturated. Well, that's all, the other question. Say is, if it took three more years, you'd be out of, you know, it's. I, I get the inquiries. I know. I know. But it's, it's a, this shouldn't yeah. discourage people, but it's a pretty expensive process just to go through it. Yeah. And then you never, there's no guarantees at what you're going to get. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be in the marijuana business myself. I just want to be in that zone, and I would let some of these guys come in, and yeah, that, yeah, that's, yeah. The, that, that's their whole deal. Right. Yeah, but every right. inquiry I get, I send them here and they don't even want to bother with the boards until it's in the zone and then they go I can see they've got they've got this they've got the state it's 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 a process so they don't want to have one more step which 
I understand. That's why I was trying to uh, uh, make it a little easier. Uh, so it's not what you want to hear, but that's, I think, the okay. reality of it. All right. Well, you've answered my question. If you can put it in the back of your head, I follow yeah. your uh, news. So I'm like saying a year or two. Yeah, the we'll market see. might be saturated. See where we are. Um, but then again, some of these complexities of it, maybe uh, maybe somebody needs a, a simpler spot without neighbors. I don't know. Exactly. Oh. All right, you got these guys' names, do you? The ones that were here before? Uh, yeah, I've seen the names. And, uh, yeah, and they're the ones. Yeah, they, I mean, they seem to have their own property already. And, and I'm familiar with the cannabis board. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they all seem to, I, I can see that they're, they're 50, 90 percent through the process. Yeah, no, these these two are, I think, but they sometimes look for other sites too. So that's all. All right, thanks all for right. Thank you. Thank you. I don't think we have anything else. Okay. To deal with. Um. Do you want to adjourn? I. We could adjourn. Does anybody have any other? Well, I'm just gonna a couple of things that I've been. Questions so there's some new reports coming out of Colorado. Um, they found that for every dollar gained in tax revenue, Colorado taxpayers paid 450 to mitigate the effects of uh, legalizing marijuana cultivation. So there, that's kind of interesting. I gave everybody um, a letter that a gentleman by the name of George Seaver is, is in Bourne is writing, it, but it affects us as a municipality who, uh, for whatever reason, gave up their integrity for addiction. Um, Basically, when the lawsuits come down the pike, don't think that you personally uh, are immune to uh, personal liability if uh, one chooses to enact the RICO laws. Um, so th those were the two points I wanted to bring up tonight. I gave everybody a copy of that. You can do some more research yourself, but uh, you could be looking at personal liability down the road when the uh, lawsuits start for health problems and um, you know any sort of property issues. So those were the two things I wanted to bring up tonight on that. Um, I've been researching, trying to get to be sure that it's 100% accurate data with backup to, to prove, prove it. Thank you. But, so that's, that's what I have. Uh, Thank you. We've got some mail. Yep. Uh, it looks like each one of us has a letter. Uh, no, no dates or anything. Well, actually, it's dated, but no. Uh, let's see. Rachel, Max, is Paul here? Nope. We'll leave it in the mail then. Uh, Roger, there's mine. And the Camosa. John I'm, I'm sure they're. I'm sure they're Valentine's cards. No, you're Max and you? Um, uh, 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 let's see, oh, town of Conway, six megawatt going up on Poland Road, North Poland Road. And that's really the only thing that we, it, it's far away, but I mean, we, we, we always have interest in solar, so. Six megawatt, that's a very large. Where is that? Uh, either Poland Road or North Poland Road or oh, Conway. Conway. I mean, that's huge, six meg. Mm -hmm. So I got a, a couple things. Is um, Italian Bond is looking for their last payment on the, um, on the proposed Dollar General project. And I don't know, do you know if that money was deposited with the town? No, I looked into it, and I have no proof. And Diana will be in tomorrow. Oh, okay. So I'll ask her, but I talked to the accountant. I looked around. I don't have any proof that it was, but um, we hopefully we'll know tomorrow. All right, and then just a little bit related. We've all received things from Fletcher Tilton, and just so you know, the town is taking this into, um, they've brought it to the town attorney, and apparently the select board is going to have an executive committee meeting this Wednesday night. Session session, uh, executive session this Wednesday night uh, to talk about what to do about it. So if you have questions, hopefully they'll be answered Wednesday night. Um, and if they aren't, yeah. 
the less said, Please the better ask. at this point. So, um, Wendy or Kip, uh, uh, so you're going into executive session to speak of this? Is this something with, that the with, plan with council? With council. Yeah, so it's, it's in the select board's lap for now because. So we we just stay away. Okay. Yeah. For now. For now. Yeah. Are plenty more members invited to that, or they're not? Not at this time. And, and no offense, but um, we'd like to be updated. <laughs> we'll check with council as to what, yes. you know, strategically and, you know, uh, how to approach right. this. And, you know, if, if it uh, clearly, if it makes sense to do so, I All think right. the board would. The other thing I got a request today from Pan Am Systems that. Um, they're looking for their decision. Um, is it this one? One of them. So we have to get. Um, this is the kind of stuff that Pat and Connor were following up on a month ago. So I'll Maybe talk Diana to Diane about it tomorrow. Okay. But we, these are ones that we've made the decision, but we have to get it all written up so they can get That's there. That's the solar. Oh, Pat. The two yeah. solar, or the solar project at Deerfield um, rail, rail yard. <laughs> Huh. So that they can Where'd get, <laughs> they need to get their uh, into that smart program or whatever it is. So mm -hmm. they need to get on their decision. So, so I'll follow up with you guys tomorrow. Then and they're still working on the pilot with assessors also. Okay. Hundred year railroad yard, right? Hundred railroad yard road. Do you know that was the name? So are we are being contacted by the landowner, not by the average. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, they all want to. Oh, that's um, Pan Am isn't the applicant. No. That's something different. No, it's not. Well, it says on behalf of Pan Am Southern and the current property. Yeah, that is an interesting support of a guy said the railroad has been the owner. Weren't they trying to distance themselves? From letter the of support. Project? Oh, sorry. This is the letter of support from December. Sorry. That's what. Wants. That's what, and this is from Environmental yeah, Resource Management, who's speaking for Mass R E Twelve LLC. Sure. That was that letter that remember we talked about last month, but we didn't have it in front of us. It was a letter from the railroad supporting the, the project. So now we have it. Any other business? John, did you? Um, oh, yeah. There's there's one more letter, but did you uh, have? Did you already say public comment? I don't know if anybody. Had yes, I did, and um, uh, nobody. Okay, right. Uh, there, there's just another letter, maybe Wendy. Um, I, there's no action on our part here. I, I don't believe it's just informational for us. Um, this comes from um, Richard Kalashevsky, uh, and it's a letter to uh, Matt Plock, and uh, a complaint has been filed with his office that you've constructed a driveway on 116 without a permit, uh, subject to our, required by our bylaw. So this this would be the, um, I guess, the uh, Atlantic Furniture. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, the industrial park. The industrial park. So the other side. This is just informational for us, correct? Yes. There's no action on right. our part. But on the uh, on that regard, I've been um, contacted by our building inspector, and he's he's advised them to go to the ZBA for a special permit, I believe. I looked at our bylaws. It looks like if you're going to grade and do a little construction, that requires a, a site plan review. And, and to me, this is the uh, it's kind of a driveway between 116 and into the industrial park over Atlantic Furniture. It seemed like there was some grading involved there, so why wouldn't it get a special permit, a site well, plan review? Don't you have to dis disturb so much soil to have to have a site plan yeah, review? Yeah, it's, it's just and a that, tiny little. That driveway was on. existing when that was originally put in, and then DDIC, I think, is. The controlling factor, yeah. and they did. They wanted everybody to go out. There was a set of lights there. They took the lights down, or they never even put them up. But that was some of the history to that driveway. It existed forever, but right. they just yeah, didn't the complaint is it. from DDIC. This would be a DDIC slash nasty. Well, DDIC brought the complaint, oh. and so they are. They have their own attorney, and they're proceeding with that. For, for my two cents, is that the, the size of that driveway that was constructed. The majority of that work was done on state property, and they did have a permit from the state to do that. So the amount of disturbed land in Deerfield, I don't even think, would come to 600 square feet. Well, it doesn't matter. It's still disturbance in within the confines of the Deerfield 
uh, right, but I'm, line, so. I'm saying, but the disturbance is so minimal, it doesn't fall within our jurisdiction. Well, it does. 5413. 5413 says grading, clearing, or other land development activity except the following. And it's landscape on an existing dwelling, um, clearing necessary for percolation or other site test, work incidental to agricultural activity, or work in conjunction with an approved subdivision plan or earth removal permit. So that's that's separate than 5411, which talks about the 600 square feet of building. Right. You know. right. But so, do, you, do you really want us to get involved with 400, 400 square feet? No, I never said I wanted to get involved. No. So when, when a building inspector says, does it require site plan review, no. I go to the bylaws and I say, what does the bylaw say? Because I don't like to make judgments. Uh, I don't think it's site plan review. No I mean, I, I, I guess I understand the uh, uh, DDIC's point. I mean, the a driver shield park and it's kind of controlled. <laughs> Well, that's, uh, so, yeah, yeah, so, so that's, uh, I thought they... But for us to get involved with it, uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, that was just for comment purposes, as far as I know. So mm -hmm. here's your mailbag back. Thank you. <laughs> Anything else? I make a motion to adjourn. All those in favor? Wow, second. Aye. Second, third, fourth. Wow. It passes. Imagine that. If you, Thank you. If, since you